Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Askelis Inventress. My business is Inventing A to Z. At Inventing A to Z, I work with clients to take their products from concept to fruition, from a napkin idea all the way to the marketplace and everything in between the right way. If you want to contact me, email me, Lisa at inventingatoz.com. My website, inventingatoz.com. Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Askley, the inventress. Welcome to my podcast. Hi, everybody. This is Lisa Askley's The Inventress. Welcome to The Inventress Podcast. Today, I'm excited because I have not only an amazing entrepreneur, philanthropist, caring, loving, kind human being. Uh, we've been good friends now for, I, geez, I have to say, it's got to be five years. Time flies. Well, um, I can go on and on and on, but here is, welcome, my good friend, Eric the Reptile Guy. <laughs> I call you the Reptile Guy, because you are. <laughs> Eric, how are you? I'm good, Lisa. I'm really good. I'm glad I'm talking to you. <laughs> so happy to have you on the show today, Cause, because I know, first of all, you have so much to share. But I want to back up. I mean, I don't feel like when I'm giving you an introduction, it's enough because you do so much more than my introduction could possibly explain. Um, no, if people have not seen you, they got to see you. They've got to see you in action. I'm sure many of them have seen uh, seen you on different television shows with different reptiles and different types of animals and uh, just with your loving heart and your loving self, and even being at my conference with all of the reptiles <laughs> at our AOE conference. So, Eric, let's talk about who you are because I can talk, but let the let the listener know who you are. Who is Eric the Reptile Guy? Eric the Reptile Guy. So, the Eric the Reptile Guy part, Wow, that, that came about because since I was a young man, young young boy, six years old, um, my parents took me on, actually my, my, my daycare center took me to a, on a trip to go to Bear Mountain, and I remember this trip, I remember how the air smelled, smelled so fresh, Oh my God. and just the water, the big lake there, and there was a, a gentleman there that was fishing, mm-hmm. and when he was fishing, I, I went over to him and I was with the, you know, the teachers were there, but they said, you know, let's go see what this guy's doing. And I was, I was really curious. And he was fishing for, for tadpoles and he had, he was in the water and he had a bucket and he had a, a, a hanger, like a wire hanger that you would get from the, from the, um, <laughs> from the, for the dry cleaners. Mm-hmm. And he had well, tied up with a stocking attached to it and he's fishing around like, like moving it around in the water. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, catching tadpoles. And I'm like, I want to see some tadpoles. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was it. And then, it, then that, that, that started the curiosity about, um, about, about reptiles and amphibians. And, you know, tadpoles is the long stage of a frog. And so, um, so that, that whole thing started. And then we, we raised the, the tadpoles to turn the frogs and they died. And then, you know, then, you know, unfortunately they died, but then it, it still, you know, as a kid, you don't know all the things about nature, but it sparked the curiosity. That's, mm-hmm. that's where it began. And then from there, it just, um, it ballooned into where we are right now. And where are we right now, Eric? Because, I mean, that's, that's incredible. I love it. You see how you absorb as a child, you are a sponge and you can learn absolutely anything and your parents were incredible for for taking you out and i'm sure there was not just one adventure there were many but this is the one that stuck with you the most right yeah yeah it was so so let's talk about let's talk about where you are today so we're talking about we're talking about tadpoles you know when you were six seven years old so we went from tadpoles to 
we we got these uh, boa constrictors and we've got these. <laughs> come on, listen. You were sitting. You know, just uh, just uh, yesterday there was an article about a gentleman that was arrested for having um, the snakes illegally. He had other stuff now too, but he had um, you know uh, the snakes. There was, there was I think they found twenty loose Burmese pythons in his home. And you know, I, I was sad that the guy got arrested because I mean he had drugs and things that's which you know he shouldn't have had that. But as far as the pythons were concerned, my feeling was that. Somebody that keeps their animals like that free knows the value of, of freedom for uh-huh. the creatures, you know. And, and and that speaks to where we are today because now um, an epiphany happened to me, I want to say three years ago, where I had, I was I was doing the shows for years. The shows were going great. You know, we, we were, you know, we were clear. What shows are you, what, what shows though? Tell, let, tell us what shows you're talking about. Oh, the animal, yes, so they, excuse me, yeah, like let everybody know. So I do a lot of animal shows for children. So with <laughs> reptiles. And the beauty of this, it, it, and I think what I really want everybody to know is the most important thing is, is you know, the story behind when we, when we started is one thing, but then where we end up when it comes to, when we, when we tune into who we really are, then the universe unfolds right before your eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever your belief is, you know, no matter what it is, what, you know, you believe in God or Buddha or whoever, it really, you know, for me, I believe in God, and I know that the, when, the way this unfolded was all magical. And I, I really, you know, I thank God every day because it's like, you know, I was was doing show. I was actually going to veterinary school. I was pre- pre- preparing for vet school in Stony Brook University. I was I was preparing, getting all my biology requirements, organic chemistry and biochemistry, and uh, was it a statistics and all these courses that I needed to take to, to to take that route. And however, during that time, I was still with the animals. I had the animals always. And then my last semester at Stony Brook, um, I got I was working at a vet hospital, and I got fired from that job. And it was, the, it was, I think, the fourth job in the world I got fired from. And I was just depressed. I was like, I can't believe this happened. And I was struggling. Like, I was pressing on vet school. I was like, I'm going to vet school. Even though I have my animals and reptiles, that's the secondary thing. Mm-hmm. And I need to figure out how to make a living. So that's what I'm going to do for vet school. And then the, the coolest thing happened was that I ended up watching the Tyra Banks show that morning and I was I just turned it on it was usually it came on at 9 o'clock at the time I was sitting on the couch kind of sad because I had got you know let go from this job and it was like two days after it was December 5th 2005 and I turned on the television and Tyra said this show is about following your dreams as soon as I saw it I said what? that's it I'm done <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not worried about that school anymore everything and, and I didn't even it, it just, it was just like, like automatic. Like it was, it was on autopilot. Every, 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 it was like a big wind came from behind me and pushed me. Like I was, yeah. like, I was riding the best wave ever. Like it was just this wind and just like flying high. And that didn't stop. It didn't stop. It was just like automatic. And I said, I'm, I'm immediately after I saw the show, I said, I'm going to go make me some brochures. I'm going to make me some business cards. I'm going to write it. And I didn't have a computer at the time. I had my I was on my last check from that job, mm-hmm. and you know that could be my last. Cause I had no money in, in the bank saved up or anything, you know. And I, I said, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this um my last check, and I'm I'm gonna make some brochures and, and stuff. And I went to, to FedEx office, made some brochures, made some postcards, and not postcards, made brochures, made a, like a pamphlet, mm-hmm. and I went on foot from school to school to library to deliver. That animal shows. And I want to do live animal shows to teach people about how important these creatures are to our planet. And so, I so that's a determination that you know we talk about all the time on on my show. I talk about mm-hmm. determination. In fact, I was interviewed by someone this morning, and they said, "Who is your best client?" I said, "My best client is Mike, the client who is the most determined." And believes in themselves and believes that whatever it is they put out there, they set forth, they can achieve if they decide, if they, if you decide it. 
So yeah. you decided yeah. back in December of 2005 after watching Tyra Banks, you're like, okay, done. Whatever Tyra said, you know, she put you... you know she started the show off with saying, this show is about following your dreams. It looked directly at the camera. Mm -hmm. She looked at the camera and said that. She was talking directly to me that day. She was she talking, was talking to, to you. Eric the Reptile Guy. She's like, oh, Eric the Reptile Guy, follow your dreams. <laughs> I'm sure she would love to hear that. I'm sure she would love to hear that at some point time. You need to circle back and, and reach out to Tyra and tell her, you know, that um, this is where it all started. It's all timing, yeah. too. It's timing. It's where your heart is. It's where your mind is. It's your clarity. And you were, and, and your readiness. You were ready to jump off and get this started. So here we are yeah. from 2000 to 5. Here we are. Two, we're 2020. That's a long time. So, so let me ask you this. 15 years later. So you, so how did you get, did you have any reptiles at the time? Oh yeah, yes. I, okay. I, so the thing is, is that the reptiles never left my life. I've I've had I used to hide reptiles in my room, like when I lived home with my parents. Oh. Got kicked out. Oh. And, and, and this is this is such a special story. What I'm about to share with you is that my parents they love me a hundred percent. However, mm -hmm. I drove them with all those <laughs> animals in the house, and <laughs> and I would sneak stuff in. And I remember one time my um. And I'll just tell her, share the story with my, with my dad and my mom. Uh, we, we had a, a Zoom meeting with some friends in which they were laughing about it, sharing it. And we were saying that, um, you know, when my I had the animals in the room hidden because, not because I wanted to see <laughs> my it. parents. I, I just wanted to see my parents. Mm -hmm. but it was like the, the, the energy of me working with those animals was so profound that mm -hmm. I couldn't deny it. Mm -hmm. And, then, and I, I had to figure out a way to do it. So I was trying to do it at work. I was trying to do it at school. And then my friend, Joe, was like, Eric, we got these new snakes at the reptile store. you got to come see these. Went over there to go see them. I'm like, oh, man. I was like, well, I can't have them. I said, no. And then he said, well, why don't you just get a sweater box and just you know, get some underbed boxes. You can put a snake inside there. That's what they do now. I'm like, what are you talking about? They can't even put them in a, in a big, you know, box. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll get a real big sort of box and my parents will have no clue. I'm going to do that. Put them under the bed. And then I did under the bed. And then I did a tarantula on top of the bookcase. No and I had way. And like a little bit of basket where I put my pencils. And like, nobody knew I had these animals for a couple of years. And then finally, it was a hot summer. My dog had a German Shepherd. He would sniff, kept sniffing under by the, <laughs> the, by the bed. And he's a, you know, a German Shepherd is like a, kind of like a retriever in a way of that behavior where if they smell something and they're curious about it, they'll let you know that it's there. Yes. So he kept sniffing under the bed with my dad, sniffing under the bed, went to my dad. So my dad, my, my dog ended up giving me away. <laughs> <laughs> Threw you right yeah. under the bed, not under the bus, under yeah. the bed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Yep. But even better than that, when that happened, I was upset at first, but then my professor at Stony Brook, her name is Dr. Patricia Wright, and she is a world famous comatologist next to Jane Goodall. Uh -huh. It's Pat Wright. Oh, wow. And, like, it, it really is how it is. And Pat has discovered a lemur called the Golden Bamboo Lemur. And this is, this is the serendipity part. So this audience should stay with us on this one because mm -hmm. this is the important part. Mm -hmm. So I was in school. I went to Stony Brook 2000 and I think it was 2002, 2003. That's around the time this whole thing was going down, right? And I remember I went to Pat's office and I said, Pat, my parents found all the animals under my bed. Um, is there any chance I can keep my animals in your office? Now, I had just signed up to be at Stony Brook that semester, mm -hmm. and my guidance counselor said to me, he goes, Eric, you should study in the office for Madagascar. And I said, why? Mm. He said, well, he, he said, because I just have a feeling. A feeling, it wasn't like, you know, I see you going to vet school, but I think you should work in this office for this, this you know, the, and that, the, um, the ecology and evolution department and, and, and work with them and do your undergraduate research there with them. And I'm like, okay, all right, that sounds cool. I'm not, you know, I don't know really a lot about lemurs. I know a lot about reptiles. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the office, and it was the best experience ever, Lisa. Mm. It changed everything. So I went there, and I was actually um, 
I was actually working with a, with a um, Dr. Patricia Wright and Dr. Sharon Cochran. They mm-hmm. let me keep all my animals in their office. And then Sharon knew that I loved all these reptiles and spiders and creepy crawlies. So she would always leave a, um, a scientific paper on my desk every mm-hmm. time I came in. So every time I came in, there was a science paper right there on my desk. I would come in, scientific paper, ready for me to, um, to observe. And then, um, then it was about, I got, I got, I got, it was 2005, I got fired from that job. And then I saw the Tyra show, and I'm still working in that office. Now, the thing of it is, I'm working in that office in 2005, and I remember even before that, that the energy of, feeling confident and positive was already on its way mm-hmm. and it was on its way and I had competed in a bodybuilding competition got first place while I was working there in 2003 and the, the competition part wasn't the thing it was the fact that I was following this whole path of, of opening up and people believing in me and me believing in myself amen that was number one number one yeah. Believing yeah. in yourself, you felt empowered. You mm-hmm. knew exactly what you wanted to, to do. You were led. Tyra happened to be on at the right time. You were in the right yeah. place. And I, I yeah. believe that's the way things are typically aligned, it's right? If, if you, if you, if, if, and when you pay attention. Yeah, and when you pay attention, and and it's this little, it's like these little clues, like like you're getting the clues along the way. So the first in Madagascar, and understand that, then I'm working in the office of Madagascar. Now this is where it gets even more fun. Mm-hmm. So I'm working in that office, and then you know I, I left the job. They knew that I was, you know, I, I decided to do this new path, and I was still working there. And then it, I um, it was the it was it was March first, two thousand and six. Right, which happens to be my birthday. Right, so as I'm delivering all these these, these brochures to everybody, I come across um, a librarian who says, "I think Eric, you you need to sign up with the the, the library system in Suffolk County, Long Island, because I'm working Long Island." Mm-hmm. And then she said, um, "You know, contact them." I said, "Okay." So I contacted them, let them know what I was doing, and then next thing you know, I get a phone call from them like February the twenty eighth. Okay get a phone call from them, and then they said to me, they said, um, they said, Eric, um, we got an extra showcase spot for you on the tw- uh, on uh, March 1st for a, a showcase. If you want to do a showcase, <laughs> you, can, you can go in front of all the librarians in Suffolk County and Nassau County. I'm on like, your birthday? What? Yes, on my birthday, Lisa, and I'm just doing <laughs> my business. I'm about to graduate. I didn't have a job lined up. I'm just going door to door delivering brochures. I think I put my first show. I had one show on my on my calendar, and then I went from one show on my calendar to more than forty books for the whole summer. Oh my, my gosh! Hallelujah! Done, done, and 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 and, and, that, and that, that was the most money I had ever made in my life. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and I was working from animal hospital, left that job, got pushed into this. And then I was working at, I still was working at Amla kind of part-time mm-hmm. to supplement my income before I was going full force into the business. Mm-hmm. And so there, was, there was a lady there, her name was Dee. And Dee said to me, Dee was a horse person. She loved horses. And she, she was a horse trainer at working at an emergency animal hospital because I was a licensed veterinary technician mm-hmm. going on my way to vet school. And I told Dee what I was doing. And Dee said, look, Eric, I know that your dream is to work with these reptiles and do your shows. When you have shows coming up, don't worry about it. We'll find coverage for you. Just let me know a little bit in advance, or even if it's like the next day, you let me know because you got to follow your dream. That's, That's incredible. And that was, that was my boss at the time. And she's like, listen, do your dream. My dream and she told me, my dream is to work with horses and blah, 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 And I can see what your dream is to do. The reptiles will go for it. And she, she that was it. And I and I went for it, and it was it was amazing. And now... You know, now we're all these. Now, even better though, when I went for it was probably May. I did that showcase, and I'm like on fire. I get invited <laughs> to go on the um, on a what do you call it on a radio show uh-huh. um, on on BLI 106.1 WBLI. Oh wow! Long Island, this radio station, and I we get invited to go. My friend's doing this this show, and she said, Eric, 
you know, break, you know, make sure you bring some of your animals and bring your safari outfit. I'm like, well, I don't have a safari <laughs> outfit. I better go to Marshalls and go get one. So I went to <laughs> Marshall? <laughs> Why Marshalls? But, well, well, Marshalls had, had everything back in the day. So, yes, okay, Marshalls. They had everything. They had glasses. Yes. They had everything. They had the shorts. They had the everything. And they had the hat. Now the hat. And the, the hat. Safari hat. Uh huh. Safari hat. Are you ready? Uh huh. Safari hat. Uh-huh. I went to Marshall. I pick up a hat. It was like the straw looking hat. This looks like a cool one. Uh huh. Pick it up. Look at the tag. And you know what it says on the tag, Lisa? What? It says made in Madagascar. No, it did not. Yes, it did. Come on. <laughs> Come it, on. How so, much more? How much of a slap in the back of the neck and clear could God be what? ever? So Come on. God is Count for Madagascar. What? I'm working as Madagascar. I see the hat from Madagascar. And then, oh, you know, my I gosh. The animals that I had in my house, right? Now, at this point, I was with, I had my own place by this point, and I had got these Madagascar hissing roaches, okay? I had Madagascar roaches in my house. And millipedes from Madagascar, from Africa. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take my Madagascar hat that's made of a plant from Madagascar called raffia. Mm-hmm. And I learned about that plant while I was in the office doing the data entry for the lemurs in Madagascar with Dr. Pat Wright. Mm-hmm. I would not have known what raffia was if I wasn't working in that office. And it said, made in Madagascar, raffia. It was I'm right there for you. Raffia. It was sitting there yeah. waiting for you. See how the docs... Dots get connected. How does yeah. that happen? You know, it's just, it's there, magic. there's no such thing as coincidence. Don't believe in it. No. Uh, I believe of, I always say it, divine appointments and connections, but you really need to listen and be aware and respect yeah. the people who are put before you, right? These people Absolutely. who are put in Dr. Wright. You know, I mean, you, Dr. Per- Patricia Wright, one of your your um, your mentors. You said Jane yes. Goodall also, another yes. uh, mentor person who just directed you and guided you. But you're one of those guys too, Eric. You listen, you pay attention, you focus on the things that you know are going to take you to another space because you're very very unique. You're a unique guy, that's for sure. And that's what I 100% love about you, too. You're your authentic self, and you just show up and you show out. Boy, do you show up and show out with all of your reptiles and, you know, the different animals. And people love that about you. You know, I have, I have to go back to say, you know, we met through Tracy Washington Bagley. I believe yeah. you were on, I have to say that, you know, because Tracy, those of you who don't know Tracy, she is the one of the executive producers um, at ABC Television uh, for Here and Now with Sandra Bookman. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. believe you were on one of her shows, and she, I believe she called me while you were there. Yes, yeah. Right? That, that, was, the time. that was the time, yeah. That was definitely... That was definitely the time. You know when it was, Lisa? I remember now. What's that? It was actually in 2014 because I was I was ready to do a, a worldwide trip, a six a, was a seven country trip, a seven country trip to deliver books to children and to um to start the process of building a school for children in Madagascar. That's what we were doing, and I remember it because Lisa said you got you got to connect, and that's when we connected. So it's been it's now it's six years. It's six years now. Jeez. See how time flies? Yep. That's why you have to move on your dreams. You really do. Six years. I'm thinking four or five years. This is why you have to move on your dreams. And you've gotten yep. so much done from the time our first conversation to today. There's so much you've done for so many people in their hearts and souls and minds and the animals, the reptiles that you you saved and who are living in your apartment <laughs> living with you well living in your house yeah living in your house all spread out having a good old time 
The apartment was here too small for the animals. I remember when I was living in the apartment, the apartment was, was interesting because um, now, thank God, we have a bigger space for the animals because the apartment, I gave up my bedroom. Mm -hmm. I was sleeping on the food side and the animals were sleeping in, in, the, um, in the bedroom. So I gave, them, I gave up my bedroom. I was like, nah, they, they got, I, my kids need to live good. So. <laughs> well, we know who's boss. We know, yeah, we know who's in charge. That we know. Well, thank yeah. God you have enough room now, but you you can all you can all have your own bedrooms. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yep. You yep. are an amazing man. You really, really are. And I and I want you to tell people what you're doing. Uh, please share your website so they could just get a smidgen. Because until they meet you and see you and get to know you in person, they're never going to know the depth and breadth of who you are. So share your website, yes. please. Yep, sure. It's a, it's adventureshow.com. So we have we actually have three websites to be honest. We have three websites because you know it, there's three things that are very important that I, I want to share with your audience before we close out. Okay. You know, first of all, adventureshow.com was the one that started it all, and it's adventure with an E for education, so educational venture. And then we've got um, the um, the wkci.org. And that's Wildlife Kids Club International. That's the 501c3 branch of, of um, Eric Chappelle Ventures. So we basically started this not-for-profit to build schools for children in other countries. Now, not just a traditional school. These are environmental education schools and mm -hmm. programs for children, you know, worldwide that don't have the opportunities to go to school. So that, um, you know, 80% of the kids around the world, you know, maybe even more than that, are not able to go to school because of, you know, because of poverty. So, you know, um, Madagascar was the first place we did that. We actually have a building there. It's called School Number 16. Um, and uh, that's thanks to Kamal Foundation and a, a bunch of other people. We can't even name everybody, but that, that made that possible. And the latest is, the, uh, is NatureNow360.org. Now, Nature Say that now again. So it's, it's Nature Now. Yeah. Nature Now. Nature Now 360. Okay. Dot org. Dot org. Okay. Yep. Dot org. And that that site it will be live, you know, very very shortly on October twenty. The, the end of October, the the twenty fourth. So if anyone's listening now, if it goes back, it, it's the twenty fourth of October. We're doing a special launch because we did a Kickstarter campaign. As it will be twelve weeks as of October twenty fourth, and that Kickstarter campaign made it possible for us to create. A new magazine called Nature Now 360. Congratulations! To wow. Yeah, to connect people to nature, and and it's so important right now, especially in the age of what's going on right now with mm -hmm. this virus and all that stuff. That the animals speak to us all the time, yeah. and people need to know how to connect with nature and how to you know do earth friendly things to make sure that that our kids and our kids' kids and the planet. Is, is in good standing, you know, when, you know, now, starting now, like everything we do now is going to make the difference for later. So that magazine is specifically speaks to one species per month. This, that month is um, actually uh, monarch butterflies, which are me mega pollinators that pollinate flowers for us. And, you know, all the pollinators are on, on a decline. Many mm -hmm. animals are on a decline. But it's going to support our, our world and, and have people understand that the actions we, you know, not just the actions we take, but the animals are speaking to us. You know, for example, that, uh, that issue also includes frogs, mm -hmm. uh, bullfrogs, and that issue um, talks about, there's an article in there about, um, that, that talks about how COVID and, and the pitchers fungus are actually related, and how um, frogs may have a, an answer to um, a potential cure for, for, for that. How would they do that? So I have to ask you, I mean, because you and I could stay on the phone for hours talking about, you know, all of these different things on the show. Uh -huh. In terms of, you're saying the bullfrog could possibly have an answer. What is it? Okay, so the, it, the thing is, is that in, um, in the last 20 years, there's been a, more than 168 extinctions of amphibians. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, more than half of those are frogs. All right, so they're gone extinct. So I think it was around two, in the early 2000s, there was a, this fungus called chitrid fungus 
that spreads to frogs and causes them to suffocate, can't breathe, and then they mm. can't breathe through their skin. They drink through their skin, they breathe through their skin, and this 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 uh, fungus causes their skin to get thick and they can't breathe, right? Mm. So that's what happens to the frogs. And and um, I forget early two thousands in, in Honduras, there forty percent of the population of frogs was wiped out. Forty percent. Okay. Huge. From and from this disease, from this fungus, from this disease. From, from the fungus. Yep. Okay. It's a complete fungus. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and one one minute the fungus is there, next minute the frogs are all gone, and they trace it to this fungus that that um that acts rapidly. Mm-hmm. Now, fast forward to now. Um, actually, before we fast forward to now, about the bullfrog, the bullfrog is resistant to this fungus. Okay. So other frogs will die from it. Even frogs that are up here, the, the um, wood frogs, other types of frogs will survive if they get it. The bullfrog can have it and doesn't have any ill effects. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the North American bullfrog. And because uh, the scientists I know they've studied it and they, they're working on figuring out why, how are they resistant to it. Okay. Now, although there are two different types of, of, of pathogens, one's a fungus, one is a virus. You know, but they are both invasive pathogens, okay? Mm-hmm. Where they can they can cause they can cause you know um, you know very you know cause the, the, the host to be very ill or even you know um, death. So when COVID came around, I was listening to all the reports of what was happening to people before they knew what it was and how to how to stave it off. They. When I heard the report about how COVID was, was, was um, you know, making people sick and people passing away from it, mm-hmm. I was like, wait a second. You hear about this? Like, this, it, it, it causes respiratory problems, which frogs respirate through their skin. Mm-hmm. That's their respiratory. That's how they breathe. You know, they breathe through the nostrils, but many, a lot of the respiration takes place in the skin. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, with, with, um, with this virus, it's saying a similar thing. People can't breathe, uh, like this. And so I said, wait a second, this is the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I said, look at this. So that, that's, and that's the important thing. That's what st- scientists are studying now. It's like, how are they resistant? What, why are they resistant to this, um, to this, this fungus? Mm-hmm. And so that's what, when I heard this, I said, well, this is why it's important for us to look at this, this animal to understand why it is resistant and why, you know, for, uh, for COVID, the same thing. Why are some people resistant? Why are some people get sick? What is it? What, what's what's going on? So is there these two things because they're both invasive pathogens are on the same trajectory, mm-hmm. you know. And so it's important to look at it, you know. And that, and I'm not saying that this is definitely the cure, not anything like that. So I don't want people to, to get it, you know, uh, misunderstand. No, it's just a conversation. <laughs> What's that? I said this is not scientific necessarily. This is just a conversation, and and this is your yeah. this is your take. So that's okay. We're clarifying that to all of you <laughs> listeners yeah. out there. Yeah, and it, and it's not scientific too. It's just like they, they can't they can't put it out there until it's out. So they got this, so they write the paper about it. How we're always we're, we're, we're all science. guessing. We're all guessing, Eric. So yeah, for now. Yeah, yeah, but we do have a scientist. Um, her name is Sarah. And she, um, she's the one that, that alerted me to the, um, to the, uh, the paper about the bullfrog. So I can't even share that, um, if anybody's interested, but it'll be a, it'll be on our website. But the, the scientific paper that she wrote about that was, you know, maybe like, wait a second, let's look at this. How is it possible that this frog is resistant and all the other frogs aren't? And mm-hmm. so, yeah, so that, that's, um, that's, that's pretty what, amazing. Um, that's pretty amazing. So I would like for everybody to go to follow you on social media 100%. I want them to go to your website and um, just really get to know about who you are. I know that you gave us several different uh, websites. You gave us um, the education, right? The education website. Yeah, Adventure Show. Yeah, Adventure Show. WK, so, but that's uh, that's WK, not yeah. that's not adventure. It's adventure, adventure. right? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, educational benches. That's the, that's the best one. And you know what? If they go to Eric's Reptile Benches for our, for our Facebook page, uh-huh. that'll lead everybody to all the other things that we're doing for sure. Okay, we, good. We're always talking about all this stuff. So if they go, you know, on Saturday mornings, we still Skype live with Madagascar with the children there at the Nature Center. Mm-hmm. So they can see the kids there live every Saturday. We do that at 9 a.m. And it's on Facebook live. And uh, we just started that a few weeks ago, doing it on Facebook Live, so that's the best way um, to, to see, like, visually what's happening and, and to participate, because we get people to participate in, in exactly what we're doing. So this is a participatory, you know, uh, event, and all this whole thing is, everything is. So it, it is not, you know, uh, it's not about me at all. It's about all of us together, coming together and making this work. Yeah, but you're 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 the most amazing vessel. You are the most incredible vessel of all times. Your energy is so palpable and everybody listening knows exactly. They are feeling you. Uh, they can't wait to meet you that I know. Many of them have met you because you're on our motivational Mondays every Monday, right? Yeah. <laughs> We can't help it. And we use our foot on Mondays. You know that. We lift each other up two hands yeah. at a time. We use that foot. No, We're dancing. No, <laughs> We're dancing. We're kicking it up. And mm-hmm. you, you know what I love? I, I love your energy Monday because you really do. You lift everybody up. You know, some people are shy to get on and start dancing. But between you and, and, you know, a couple of others, Elizabeth Gerhardt and, uh, you know, Teresa and, of course, Audrey Davis and Tara, we start rocking and there's no stopping. Yeah. And now that we yeah, have... Ain't no stopping us now. <laughs> ain't no stopping us now because we got to set it off. We've got to set it off, right? Mm-hmm. And we set it off every Monday morning. And I'm so happy to see your beautiful face there and your energy there every every Monday and um, mm-hmm. just want to keep on listening to you and listening to your passion and your determination because all of the inventors out there, the entrepreneurs, uh, the folks who think they can't do, can do, especially when they're inspired by someone like you. You know, Lisa, it's funny you said that because, you know, Steve Jobs said that. You know what he said? He said, the people that believe that are crazy enough to believe that they can change the world <laughs> are usually the ones that do. Yes, indeed. And <laughs> yeah, and you got to do it. And not listen to those who tell you you can't. No, that doesn't exist. It, no, it, 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 it doesn't. When you're, you got to do crazy. You got to do off, you got to do out, way, way outside. Forget the box. Way, way yeah. outside the universe. Forget the box. The box is too small. So just keep on doing what you're doing. And before we wrap, I have to ask you three questions. Okay, so the first question is, if you were to write your own movie script, and do me a favor, because I've had to make sure, this is, this is, a, this, this is, very, um, this is going very public, so you don't want people taking your ideas. So if you were to create a movie idea for yourself, or the name of the movie, forget the movie idea, what would the name of the movie be? What would the name of the movie be? Oh, goodness. Okay, so what would the name of the movie be? It would be... Mm. Well, you said you want me to give it away, so I can't say it. No, you, no, you could say... You know, make something up. You, you can... Or say something close, because nobody's going to figure out how to do it, because you're the only Eric. You're the only one who could do the movie... You know what? I, and and I'm honestly, I'm okay to say this because you know, you know what? Honestly, this is from my heart. With the person that came to to me with Mang Heidi, and you'd be like, "What is Mang it, Heidi?" Mang Heidi. Okay, good. Mang Heidi. Okay, cool. Mang Heidi. Okay. That would be the name of the movie. Cool. And only you. And only you know that. Okay. So who? What actor would play you in your movie? Oh shoot! Well, I almost said Terry Campbell because he looked like me when I was a kid. <laughs> Who? Who? Terry Campbell. Remember Terry Campbell from the nineties? 
Kevin. Oh no! Oh, girl, I want to know your name. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was like, that was a Oh my gosh! Okay. Oh what? That's so unusual. Who? If he was, you know, if he was, if he, if he was, you know, if they were playing, you know, younger Eric, uh -huh. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Who Freeman. does not love Morgan Freeman? I want him to play me. <laughs> right? Right? Yes. Right. Good Morgan choice. Freeman. Good choice. Okay, Morgan Freeman. Or Denzel. Or Denzel. We, get a, we get a lot of Denzel. Denzel is the man, too. But Morgan Freeman, absolutely, 100%. I get Morgan it. Freeman. Okay, in the last... What? Do you know that Morgan Freeman narrated a doc, uh, a, one of the first feature films for a scientist, Dr. Pat? He narrated her movie, Island of Lemurs, Madagascar. Morgan Freeman did. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it's a, it's, it was in the movies on IMAX. Do you, you, Dr. Pat, right? She's, 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 she's the lady. She's the, the Lima lady. And she's, she's, um, she was working with Morgan Freeman. She's my mentor. She, you know, my trusted advisor and friend. And, um, you know, maybe we can really make that happen with Morgan. <laughs> well, you know what? Again, the, again, the dots are connected, right? Once again, yeah. and we're talking about it. We're speaking that into existence. And what is my motivational Monday? Every Monday is all about the ask, right? Ask. Yeah. yeah. Ask mm -hmm. and you shall receive. Seek yeah. and you shall find. Right. Knock and that door shall be open to you. Matthew 7, 7. Not playing. It's real. And um, and the last and final question is, if you were to be, um, I'm going to say a, desert, a deserted island. I'm not going to say a rabbit hole because I don't like that. It gives me claustrophobia. I say that all the time. People like to say that. I don't like to say that. On a deserted yeah. island, and there was only one person being thing, something you could be with, cannot be a family member, cannot be a spouse, but can be Anybody, anything you choose, because you that I do on deserted island. person, you're you're alone on this deserted island for the rest of your life. Who, what would that thing, object, person, whatever be? It would be. So it can't be a spouse, can't be a family member, none of that. Nope. Okay, so it would actually be a tortoise. It would be a tortoise, a big Galapagos tortoise. Because tortoises are wise, and they know how to be calm and peaceful. So at the, oh, no. at the moments when you, when you almost lose that peace, mm. then you just look at the tortoise and say, all right, you've been here for, you know, 100 years, 150 oh, no. years, and we're going to be here and stay positive forces in the universe and keep it going. I love that so much. Probably one of the best picks I've ever heard. And, bec and because of your explanation. I never knew that. And what kind of a tortoise is it? A Galapagos tortoise. The one that Darwin discovered in, in Ecuador. You're brilliant. I love your brain. I love your spirit and your heart. So loved this conversation, not even an interview. It's a conversation between us as it, as it always is. And uh, mm -hmm. just so love knowing right you, back, Eric. Right back on that, <laughs> really. Yeah. We just inspire each other, really. Just love knowing you, love, love your spirit. And I have to, again, I always go back to thanking the person who introduced us. There's so many, especially now on Motivational Mondays, right? There's always connections. There's reasons why we yeah. meet. So I always yeah. go back to um, thanking the person and asking that person to keep on connecting and reconnecting other people um, who can lift us up. Like I said, you know, we got to keep on lifting each other up two hands at a time. And sometimes we got to use our foot, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So it's been absolutely amazing having you on my show. 
And uh, please keep on coming back. Absolutely. You know that's right. And I'll be right there at Motivational Monday. <laughs> I can't wait. I look forward to seeing you then. God bless you, sweetheart. Love you. And uh, you have a very, very blessed, blessed day. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye for now. Until next time. For now. Until next time. All right. Take care, right. Eric. Bye-bye. Bye. So that was Eric. He's amazing. He just, Eric, the reptile guy, takes it every time. And those of you who watch our Motivational Mondays or who join our Motivational Mondays, I should say it's on Zoom, uh, every Monday morning, 10 o'clock Eastern time, it's from 10 to 10, 15. We have a DJ, we have a blast and we share the thing we talk about now. Um, I brought up for the last month or so is all about the ask, because when you ask, you 100% will receive, especially if you put the work in. I'm not saying ask and go out there and do nothing, sit around and do nothing. You know, it's when you plant the seed, you know, you shall grow crops, endless. So ask and you shall receive. And um, I guess I'm wrapping up. This was such a great show. I don't want to wrap. I just want to keep on talking. Uh, so, guys, thank you for listening every single week, week after week. To these amazing people, I'm so overwhelmed and so excited and blessed and have such gratitude to all of these folks who come out and come on our show and share their amazing stories. So until next time, please, guys, just keep on listening. If you ever want to be on my show, please email me. My email address is info at inventing a toz.com that's info at inventing a t o z.com believe it or not you can actually call my office and someone will answer the phone it's 732-647-5433 again until next time just keep lifting each other up two hands at a time and sometimes you just gotta use your foot peace